The Sapir-Whorf hypothesis is a theory in linguistics that suggests the structure of a language influences how its speakers think, perceive the world and behave. This idea proposes that people's thoughts and cultural practices are shaped, at least in part, by the language they use, highlighting the connection between language and cognition. The origins of the Sapir-Whorf hypothesis can be traced to the work of linguists Edward Sapper and his student Benjamin Lee Whorf in the early 20th century. Sapper's anthropological studies and Whorf's observations of Native American languages, such as Hopi, led them to suggest that language not only reflects culture, but actively shapes it. While Sapper and Whorf did not formally define the hypothesis, their ideas have been developed and debated extensively in linguistic and cognitive science. The Sapir-Whorf hypothesis has three key features, linguistic determinism, linguistic relativity, and the link between language and culture. Linguistic determinism is the stronger version of the hypothesis, claiming that language determines thought and limits what people can think. For example, if a language lacks a word for a specific concept, its speakers might struggle to think about that concept. Linguistic relativity, the weaker version, suggests that language influences thought but does not strictly determine it. This means that speakers of different languages may view the world differently based on the linguistic structures they use. Finally, the hypothesis emphasises the deep connection between language and culture, suggesting that cultural practices and values are often encoded in language, affecting how speakers interact with the world. Examples of the sapir whorf hypothesis can be seen in studies of colour perception and time. For instance, some languages, like Russian, have distinct words for light blue and dark blue, while English uses the single word blue. Research shows that Russian speakers can distinguish shades of blue faster than English speakers, suggesting that language influences perception. Another example comes from Horf's study of the Hopi language, which he argued lacks specific tense markers for time. Horf claimed this affects how Hopi speakers conceptualise time, viewing it as a continuous process rather than discrete past, present and future events. The benefits of the sapir whorf hypothesis include its role in highlighting the diversity of human thought and the importance of language in shaping culture. It encourages researchers to study languages as unique systems that reflect and influence their speakers' worldviews. The hypothesis also has practical applications in fields like cross-cultural communication, helping people understand and navigate cultural differences more effectively. However, the sapir whorf hypothesis has faced criticisms. One major critique is the lack of definitive evidence supporting linguistic determinism, as many studies have shown that people can think about concepts even if their language lacks specific words for them. For example, speakers of languages without a future tense can still plan for the future. Critics also argue that Whorf's early claims, such as those about the Hopi language, were based on incomplete data or misinterpretations. Additionally, some researchers believe the hypothesis overemphasizes language while underestimating other factors, like biology and environment, that shape thought. An alternative hypothesis is the universalist perspective, which argues that human cognition is largely the same across cultures, regardless of language. Universalists suggest that while language may influence thought to some extent, cognitive processes are primarily driven by shared human experiences and biology. This view contrasts with the sapir whorf hypothesis by emphasising commonalities rather than differences in how people perceive and understand the world. The sapir whorf hypothesis continues to be a topic of interest and debate, offering valuable insights into the complex relationship between language, thought and culture.